All right, say hello to Curb TGT. Say hello to Curb TGT. This is DEF CON, come on people. He's been there since the beginning, since your domain was formed. Curb TGT has been there. He's been there through the early years, the 2000 to 2004. <sighs> when everyone thought they were special and deserved admin rights. You remember the time. Curb TGT was there protesting with everyone else that everyone should be an admin. And then there was these things called domains and Active Directory. Then everyone wanted to be a domain admin. Windows 2000 was revolutionary, but so was DCOM. So in 2003, all those domains that were sitting on the internet very likely could have been owned by DCOM or any of the worms that were going around at that time. So then things got better, right? Everyone remembers that. Curb, G Curb TGT was there when you finally installed a firewall. So all those remote attacks and those worms that were destroying your domain for years were finally stopped. It was the answer to all of our security problems, right? Yep. And then there was Windows XP, probably Microsoft's greatest product, except that there was MSO8067. And once again, Pen testers and hackers rejoiced because they were easily able to knock over every enterprise. And then there was the great administrator layoff of 2007 when you realized that your domain admins group had ballooned to over 400 people and over 100 of them no longer worked at your company anymore. <laughs> Why would you say you have admin rights? So then it really got better. 2009, the security industry blossomed and everyone was selling Windows Server 2008 and Kerberos as the answer to all your pass the hash problems. You didn't have to worry about pass the hash anymore. Kerberos, it's awesome. So to manage all your local admin accounts, you decided to deploy this great new technology, group policy preferences, right? Right? Yeah. Everybody did that, including Microsoft. All right, so that's my first meme, so we're going to keep track. So in case you didn't know, group policy preferences are terrible. You should never use them. And Microsoft even came out with a patch to keep you from being able to use a feature that they swear was never a security vulnerability. So if you're using group policy preferences, uh, that's terrible. That means anyone on your network can get local admin rights or any of the passwords that are in those group policy preference files. So let's talk about the last two years. So you decide to move on, the domain moves on to server 2012 and Curb TGT is love and life because you've finally gotten rid of NTLM, you've gone to Kerberos and everything is secure. Past the hash no longer works, right? Because you got rid of NTLM. And then there was Heartbleed and it knocked over all your VPN servers and you got owned again. And there was this thing, the golden ticket, which no one seems to know anything about, that you find all over your network as well. Meme count number two. Thanks to <coughs> Mr. Benjamin Delpy in the front row. So do you know how old your curb TGT hash is? Anybody? When you created the domain or uh, when you upgraded from 2003 uh, functional to 2008. Anybody created their current domain in 2001? Nobody? 2002? 2003? 2004, 5, 6, 7? So anything that's happened, so this domain was 2004. So I guess the question is, do you know where your curb TTT hash is? Because this domain's hashes are on pastebin. <laughs> and that's not good. But the bottom line, the whole point of this talk 
is this. If you've ever been owned, if your domain has ever been compromised and your hash is dumped, you may still be compromised because that curb TTT hash is what's used to sign all of the tickets. So with that and only that, tickets can be created to take any user and add them to any group or a lot more. Did anybody go to the Kerberos Black Hat talk? Besides the two speakers in the front row that gave the talk? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> They're only here to heckle me and they've been heckling me the last half hour while I had to sit next to them in the previous talk. But now I'm on stage and you're not. <clears throat> so maybe you could be like this guy. Does anyone know who this guy is? Nobody. Cool. So he testified before Senate that as long as you, as long as you scan, you're secure. He testified against Dave Kennedy uh, or counter Dave Kennedy uh, earlier this year and he said that with a straight face. As long as you're scanning, you're secure. You have not been compromised. So <laughs> now that I have an audience other than Twitter, I would like to say good luck with that. So let's talk about Kerberos. Does nobody get this meme? <laughs> nobody gets this meme, I swear. <laughs> Magnets. All right, I'm not going to bore you with how Kerberos works. That was Skip and Ben's talk at, at Black Hat. Uh, but this is the, the, the basics of it in a really crude diagram I drew several years ago. Uh, if you'd like to go over that. Well, what I want to focus on is the spoofed pack attack, which is the privileged account certificate, PAC, which is a portion of the Kerberos ticket. And so the previous diagram and this diagram were taken from Skip in my white paper uh, for Black Hat uh, 2012. And if you see what we're doing here, we're basically just adding groups to the pack and then we're using the curb TGT hash to sign it and make it valid. So you can take any user and add them to any group temporarily and they're not actually going to show up on the domain controller in that group. So there's almost no log of this unless you actually use the privileges. So who's heard of the golden ticket attack? Awesome. So golden ticket, which is great branding by one Benjamin Delpy sitting in the front row heck heckling me right now. Uh, he added that to the wonderful tool Mimikatz. Who has used Mimikatz before? Awesome. So the golden ticket attack is not just the spoof pack that Skip and I theorized several years ago. It's, it goes beyond that. It's not only that but in addition, Ben was like, man, you guys are idiots. You can make this ticket last forever. We were like, wow, why didn't we think of that? <laughs> True story. So there's a great tutorial by Raphael Mudge who's awesome and not talking this year, which I'm disappointed about. But he did a great tutorial. Uh, that's the link to it if you want to check that out. So now it's demo time. So I pre-recorded because this is DEF CON and I knew everything was going to go wrong. All right, so let's start this over. All right, so I'm just going to pause it because it's going to go real fast. All right, so I'm doing who am I and this is the test domain. I'm limited user. I'm nobody. So in this scenario, the attacker is already compromised in one of those hundred ways that we kind of talked about earlier. Compromise the enterprise you know, way back when in 2004 with DCOM or MSO8067 or MSO9056 against SMB2 in server 2008. So the question a lot of people ask is like, well, if you've knocked over the domain, then you've already got everything. Well, the point to all of this is that you can leave and come back whenever you want. So you're not going to leave anything beaconing. You're not going to leave anything to find. So this is one way of coming back in. So this limited user is going to check the group membership of domain admins. And it's just administrator. 
like it should be. No one else. All right, this fake uh, phishing email, really important, gotta open that up. It's from the boss. It's too legit, so we gotta, that was not enough hammer time, hold on. Yeah, you gotta get that. All right, so all we need to do is enable macros, so gotta do that. So I'm gonna put this on YouTube and that's mostly for when I put it on YouTube. But what this macro is doing is it's using PowerShell. It's using VB to call PowerShell and then PowerShell is gonna pull down Invoke Mimikatz. Has anyone used Invoke Mimikatz in PowerSploit? Joe Bialik released it last year here at DEF CON. Couple people. It's awesome. Basically we get a fully staged uh, Mimikatz in memory without having to worry about AV or touching disk at all. So what we're doing is we're using a macro to call PowerShell to pull Mimikatz down reflectively in memory and to do, and then in addition I added a few things. So now I'm gonna use the, the curb TTT hash that I've already stolen to create a ticket and actually add myself to the domain admins group. So it's not just a Kerberos ticket for domain admins, we're gonna take this limited user and auto magically add them to domain admins without them even realizing what's going on. It's kind of a silly example. It's not really what you would want to do that. How you would want to do that. All right, so now the user has enabled macros and they shouldn't feel remorseful, but in this case, shouldn't have done that. All right, we see PowerShell firing up and then now you'll see limited user is in the domain admins group. So thanks to Kerberos, if you've ever been compromised, it's trivial to come back in. A single phishing email and all privilege escalation is done. Damn it. Yeah. All right, so let's talk mitigation. So this slide's been heavily worked multiple times as I gave this talk to a couple people, a couple experts beforehand. What's that? Oh, shoot. Yay! Both I and Windows 8 suck. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about mitigation. So this slide had to be reworked multiple times because everything I had on it was wrong originally. Uh, so the easiest thing, and you can read this a couple places on the internet, MSDN, uh, maybe one place. If you really want to reset the password hash to the curb TGT account, you got to do it twice. But be warned, it might literally break everything. SharePoint, Exchange, you name it, it will not automatically fix itself. It may be multiple reboots. Someone who's actually gone through it cautioned that it is not worth doing and even Microsoft hasn't done it. So the only reliable way is if you happen to have, uh, if your domain functional level is 2003 and you raise it to 2008, this really shouldn't be the reason to do it because if you're doing this because you know you've been compromised, you probably should start completely over. So I guess the biggest takeaway from this is if you've gone through and changed all of your passwords and thought that you were good, you're not. Or if you're an incident handler and you cannot figure out why a threat group keeps coming right back in and you can't figure out how they're privilege escalating, this very well could be the way. So it's all in Mimikets. Uh, I put best business practice, secure your DC with all available features and don't get owned again. Detection's worse than mitigation. It is completely a needle in the, in the haystack. It's harder to detect than pass the hash because past the hash you're actually doing something. In this case you're just generating a ticket on a single box. So until you actually use it, it would be very difficult to, to um, detect. 
as well as whether or not your curb TGT hash has been stolen. That unless you know that you've been compromised, like you find PW dump sitting on your DC, I don't really know a way for you to know that that has already been taken. You can look for strange account activity. I, I thought it was really uh, sneaky and I was like, oh, I'm going to look for 10 year old tickets and then Benjamin, Benjamin's going to go ahead and change that feature to allow the tickets to be an arbitrary length. So even that detection mechanism is not going to work for Mimikatz. But one thing you could do is look for low privileged accounts performing privileged actions. That might be the only way to detect this particular attack. So I do want to give some thanks to uh, Skip. Go ahead and stand up since you got jokes. Go ahead and stand up, Skip. And Benjamin Delpy, Ben, can you come up here? Is Joe here? Joe? By Alec? He wrote Invoke Mimikatz, which is uh, an that, that awesome PowerShell script and added it to PowerSploit. Uh, Will and a bunch of other people. So this is Ben. Ben's never been to America. He came all the way here for DEF CON and Black Hat. He seldomly ventures out of uh, France and it took a lot of negotiating I think and, and I just really want him to feel appreciated for his tool Mimikatz and the number of people that use it. So let's give Ben a hand. And I think for his long trip, he deserves this speaker badge more than I do, so I'm going to go ahead and give him that. <laughs> All right, so one more time for Ben and everybody else on the uh, golden ticket stuff. And other than that, that's all I got. I will, uh, I will see you guys around and partying tonight. <laughs>